Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today we're going to look at this little palette here. It's from Kramer Pigments, Kramer Pigmente, it's a German company and they make uh, different kinds of watercolors and um, so this is the palette that I tried. It's their landscape palette and I was very excited to give this one a go. Uh, their paints are a bit different from your usual watercolor paints and yeah, let's take a look at this in this video. So I've had this set for a while and I haven't tried it yet. It's the Kramer Pigments Landscape Painting Set and I'm really excited to try this out. I know that Kramer Pigments behave a little differently from your usual European watercolor and so, um, yeah, I got this at a, a gift and I know that in the year that the pandemic started, I actually wanted to go to Kramer's uh, headquarters, so to speak, in southern Germany because they offer workshops where you can learn how to make watercolor yourself. And I remember how excited I was <laughs> and then the pandemic came and my plans were annihilated but anyway I finally got this little set here and I'm very excited to try this out let's have a look at the colors yeah so this is the landscape set many really are muted colors I'm not too excited about the black and the white and this I think is Prussian blue Yeah, it's called Paris Blue, but I know that this is very probably, it looks like Prussian Blue, so I'm just going to assume. Uh, I'm, I'm not too happy about this because tests say, and my own tests confirm, that this is actually not light fast, uh, regardless of what company you buy it from. It's just how this kind of iron pigment reacts, but it's, it's a beautiful blue, I'll give it that. So let's take a look at the paints themselves. So I know people have been saying that these are a bit more chalky than your typical watercolor paints and I'm really excited to try them out. And I'm actually hoping that I can paint this little scene here. I'm sure you won't even see it. It's one of the landscapes that I recently sketched when I was trying to find orchids, there was a lovely view and I've wanted to, to sketch this for quite some time. And let's see how, how the Kramer pigments will actually work. So I keep saying Kramer, but uh, the name is actually Kramer, Kramer Pigmenter. That's the German pronunciation. So before I paint my little landscape here, I'll do a few color swatches and I'm just very interested to see how this paint handles. So it picks up very easily. Oh, this is a beautiful color. Gold ochre. So raw sienna and yellow ochre are very similar. And this is a beautiful variation and they actually have a second raw sienna, which is a bit darker. So to be honest, I'm not sure why they included these two different versions here and then another yellow. I'm just, well, we'll see how the palette plays together. So here we have a Venetian red. Yeah, so this is really very opaque. And I have to say, so far, the paints activate very readily and they're very sort of smooth, but I can see why people say they're a bit different. They, uh, honestly, they feel more like very diluted gouache paints, maybe because of the opacity. So, uh, oh, so this is burnt amber, and now we have green earth, which doesn't pick up as easily. 
This is a lovely tone. It's a lovely earth tone. It's really subtle. I think I can use this for the scene I'm going to be painting later. This is our red. It's vermilion. Oh, this is really opaque. I know a lot of reds are, but this is really, you have to really add a lot of water to this. This is intensive yellow and it's really intense. That's right. It's a nice yellow, but I wish, oh, I don't know. We have three warm yellow colors here in this palette. I'm not so sure about that, but again, that's probably okay for landscapes. Then we have cobalt green bluish, which I suppose will also be quite opaque. Yeah. This is chrome oxide green, another opaque paint. Yeah, you can see how chalky this is. But it's a really lovely green, I have to say. It's really more natural than any of your sap green. So if you can see the plant here in the back, ah, it's really a bit different. Then we have our Paris yellow, uh, Paris blue, rather. And this is one of the few pigments that's actually a bit more transparent. And yeah, I would say this is very clearly a Prussian blue. Then this is cobalt blue dark. I really love cobalt blues. Yeah, this is really lovely for skies. Oh, I'm liking this one a lot. Then we have zinc white. Probably not much to see there. Yeah, it's a white. Okay. <laughs> and furnace black. Which I guess I won't be using a lot for landscapes. I This is, I think, black and white are in all their ready-made sets. I would have gotten... Um, I would have gotten replacements, but I don't know. This was during my COVID phase when I ordered this. And so I just didn't think of it. And then, then we have Caput Mortem, another earth color. I like this one a lot too. I don't paint with it very often, but I really like it. Yeah, so there you have the entire palette, all of the swatches. So I think for landscapes this will probably work really well and I'm excited to try this out. So let's give it a go here. So I don't have as much room as I wish up here in the sky because I have sort of a schematic drawing of an orchid flower here. So you can actually see the sexual organs of a flower in in this video. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to put, for modesty reasons, I'm going to put this color swatch here. So I hope you aren't offended. Oh, and one thing, look at how this Caput Mortem is granulating. This is actually really awesome. I don't really paint very often with granulating paints because I don't like them for botanical work, but this one I really love. Let's mix a little bit of that gray and I'm going to try out the Venetian red and the cobalt blue which should be a good combination. Yeah it's almost a bit too violet. So I'll add a little bit of burnt amber.
Yeah, this is okay. So I added a bit of the Prussian blue or the Paris blue and I'll have to add a lot of water to this. So with any new kind of paint and pigments there's always a bit of experimentation. Uh, I do have some hills here in the back. I'm actually not sure if you can see the drawing very well, so I hope this is okay. <laughs> um, and I know I want them to be sort of this soft green, but I think I'll start with the cloudy sky first. And there was actually not very much to see on that day. I'll just keep it very, very, very soft and loose. So I think I'm going to add just a little bit of this uh, cobalt green here. And a bit of my gray mix to let it recede more into the background. Oh yes, this is beautiful. And I don't want this to be too dominant. There's a yellow field here that I will leave for now. Because I don't want to paint the yellow on top of the green. And the rest is actually similar to this green. So those handle a lot differently than my usual watercolors, my, you know, Windsor and Newton and Schmincke. Um, they're a, a bit grainy, I have to say. So I suppose the pigments are not as finely milled, which is not a bad thing. But, you know, it's just different and I suppose you have to get used to this. So I'm dropping in a few few little clouds here and also dropping in a bit more intense green that I will mix with a yellow for the foreground green so so what I'm going to do there's a bush here in the foreground and some grass and I'm just going to paint over this and then when everything has dried I'm going to refine it and paint a second layer so should have probably used a bigger brush but I thought this is such a small scene <laughs> I'm always a bit hesitant to get out my really big brushes but for this kind of big paint application it would have been fine but oh well so now one thing I want to add is this yellow field here. Yeah, this is nice. It's actually okay if this runs together a little. So the paint here is still moist. And yellow is usually a lot of yellow pigments usually just push away other pigments. Okay, what I don't like is the top here. So I'm actually going into this other, into this other scene here. I don't think the orchid will mind. Yeah, let's drop in another cloud. So this is sufficiently dry and now I can work on those hills in the back again. I'm going to use the cobalt green for this again.
And I think with those panes here, you have to be a bit more careful. Yeah, I think I'm going to modify the color a bit with this. I want to say raw umber, but it's actually green earth. Okay, there you have it. Uh, I think, oh yes, this is beautiful. I think you have to be a bit more careful with applying more paint here. Just because the paint really handles a bit differently. Yeah, so if you pick up too much, it's going to be opaque really, really quickly. Uh, there are some trees tucked in here near the fields. And one thing I would say is paint almost feels hard to apply. Um, it sort of has this resistance when you paint it on, but this could just be the combination of these particular pigments and the brush that I'm using. So I'll just reinforce some of those lines around the field here. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush to show a few of those fields. Yeah, I think it's really obvious that this paint wants to uh, granulate a lot and has a lot of a bit coarser pigments. So it would be interesting to paint an almost opaque scene with this. So it's not the way I usually paint, not even the landscapes that I do. Yeah, and so the thing that inevitably happens when you have a new palette, you ruin your yellow. Okay, let's add these bushes and grasses in the foreground. I'll apply a bit more concentrated paint here. See how this works. Yeah, this is actually not bad. It's really opaque. Nice coverage. So I would say this is my finished sketch for now. I think those paints are handling really interestingly. I'm not sure I would use them every day, but they're probably not made for this. I'm looking forward to trying these again. I don't think I would be using them a lot for botanical work or anything like that, because they're just, they give such a, a heavily, such a coarse effect and um, they have a lot of structure by themselves. Uh, but I really enjoyed painting with them and maybe I will do some more landscapes with these paints. So I'm really looking forward to that.
I hope you found this video useful. I'm not sure where you can actually get these. I think Kramer has a dependency, a store in the United States where you can get these kind of paints too. I'm not sure if they sell these sets anywhere else than in Germany. Yeah, but these were really fun to try out.